dude that that that's a new graphic man i yeah, love I did, it man i did that today <clears throat> so uh welcome back to another episode of the scuttlebutt podcast uh today we're here with uh, my co-host chaps hey, and guys. our good friend douglas barry hey doug um i just wanted to uh i want to give a talk about the intro for a second i want people to uh go ahead and drop comments um do you guys like the uh the intro should i shorten it I, I think it's a nice touch having the anthem but is it too long uh no yeah i think short, it's what I, I think it's perfect yeah uh, but that's I, just I don't want to mean i don't want to annoy the uh our uh people watching <laughs> dude but that last <laughs> graphic uh, was very 80s man that yeah, was yeah. like really 80s i love it <laughs> well i joined the navy in the 80s so i'm trying to kick it old school <laughs> nice man no it's, I, dude i think it's great um we're back in with the episode of the scuttlebutt we're talking with douglas barry but before we get into his story i just want to remember i want just want you guys to remember that uh, what we're here for we're here to save lives through communication and uh we uh started this uh, little nonprofit a couple months ago uh all the money that's generated through this channel through our patreon members our show sponsors uh all the money that uh <laughs> is coming from those people go straight into buying uh, sporting events. And uh, we're, we're sending veterans and first responders to sporting events with a mentor. And uh, we don't use any of that money at all for the show. I pay for all the production, everything hey out of my pocket. So hey every, everything, every money, all the money that comes in goes straight back to the veterans in our community. I never get a bill. I'm kind of happy. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I never get a bill. This is awesome. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Blake. <laughs> yeah. So uh if you're uh watching, you're listening, you want to help out, uh there's links down in the description for uh one time donations, Patreon, which is a monthly subscription. Uh you definitely help us out. So with that said, how's it going, guys? Uh, dude, I'm, right. I, I got I, I I'm a little hot, man. I'm a little flustered today. Yeah, it, it is a little uh a little Man, warm I'm, today. I'm burning up right now. I'm like, I'm sweating my ass off. Damn. What what is the temperature? It's it's warm as hell. It is. Wait, hold on. Let me check my phone. Hey it Google. Is... What's the temperature outside? Dude, it's 70 degrees. No wonder why it feels hot. Yeah. Damn. Google said 64, but it feels warmer than that. Well, if you so... are in Christiana, <laughs> yeah. so you're a little bit colder up there. So uh there. Chaps had a long day today. He just got back from Arizona this morning, bright oh and early. Oh, God. Dude, I got your message at 4 o'clock this morning <laughs> about doing this podcast while I was at the uh, Sky Harbor, Arizona uh, airport. And I'm like, okay, another podcast. Good to go. And then I went back to bed and then got on the plane at 5.50 and I was home by 11 o'clock. And I took a yeah. nap today, and I, I still I want to go back to bed. I'm I'm extremely tired, <laughs> but You're... not before we listen to Douglas Berry and what he's got to what he's got to give us. Hey, so uh, hey Doug, why don't you introduce yourself, buddy? Uh, yeah, howdy, I'm uh, Doug Berry. Uh, did 20 years in the Air Force, uh, four down right. at Davis Moffin in Tucson, Arizona, a year in uh, South Korea. And then 15 years, believe it or not, at Shaw Air Force Base here in uh, Sumter, South Carolina. Uh, four tours to the Middle East, two to Saudi Arabia, two to Kuwait. And uh, that sums up the uh, Air Force portion of my life. Do you um, have the, the Andrew, Air Force? Andrew has questions for you because I know I he's going to go into recruiter mode. <laughs> I do. Do you have the Air Force Expeditionary Medal with the gold trim? I do. He's good for the VFW by me. <laughs> Are you a member of the VFW, Doug? I am not currently. Oh. Okay. Well, we need to have you a part of our group, man. I'll have to look into it for sure. I will send you an application as soon as we're done here. All right, cool. Yes. Uh Chaps okay, is a that's it. national I'm done recruiter. With the recruiting <laughs> he's a national recruiter. So he's I knew as soon as you said that uh you did. You were first of all. You said you were in South Korea for what a year? Yeah, yeah. I did my short tour there. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that automatically that gets automatically you. gets you into the VFW right there. 30, yeah, 30 plus the... sixty days in Korea, and then um, that Armed Forces Expeditionary with the gold trim. That definitely gets you in. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're good to go. So uh, what is uh, 
What what did you do in the Air Force? I was a the fancy name is an armament system specialist. I was a bombs bomb loader. Uh, maintained the weapon systems on the A10 and F16 aircraft what? and uh, loaded munitions. The A10? Yeah. Oh, thank God. That's my baby. I love the yeah. A10. I love it. Yeah. I love the Warthog. It's an There's amazing, a lot to love about that thing. Amazing machine. I've got a pair of socks with an A10 on it, and it goes <laughs> on both on both socks. It's awesome. Yeah, I've it's got well, some uh, some uh, piece together dummy rounds here in the house from the 30 millimeter. I could grab one real quick if you think uh, the I would like, like to, to see. see uh, yeah, I think our, our viewers want to see a 30 Heck millimeter. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah! I'll be right back. Hold on <laughs> one second. It's right here. Yep. Da, na, 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 I, I need na, some na, na. Dude, I polished it up. Oh. It's not this shiny, actually, but there it is. Holy shit. Damn. And I'm not really, I'm not doing like that. I call it a fish thing. I'm not holding it way out here. It's just yeah. <laughs> right here. That's a big thing. Could you wow. imagine getting hit in the chest with that thing? Yeah, that's a, that would be that part that's going to come at you. Damn. And, uh. This is just a practice round, but I mean that's that's about two and a half pounds. I mean, a practice round is going to hit you; it's going to kill you. It oh yeah, it's going to rip you in half. It will probably take every single limb off of your body. Yeah. So the the real the real one is it just a like a brass piece, or is there like a little explosive in there? Because I've seen shit blow up when it hits. Oh, on the, for the high ex uh, ex the uh, high explosive dual part high explosive AT. one yeah it's got an explosive tip right here on the end of it oh uh, okay and it, it's filled up with some explosives yeah in the marine corps we call that hedp high explosive <laughs> dual purpose you yeah ever, and then you ever hit the, uh, you ever hit one with a uh, hammer piercing tip which <laughs> yeah. uh you know then you got the uranium in that and it just it basically yeah, we, salt tank uh, us marines you wouldn't want to give us uranium because we wouldn't even know what the hell to do with it yeah <laughs> <laughs> So have, you, have you ever hit one with a hammer? But, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for the Marines. Yeah, yeah we probably <laughs> would do that. Yeah, if it says don't push it, we're probably going to push oh, it. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely pushing it. <clears throat> we used to have a little bit of fun with the, with the crew chiefs and our munitions out there because they didn't really know what we were handling, you know, so it was kind of fun to, to mess with them a little bit, I, I will admit. Well, Doug, thank you for your, your service, man. Uh, where, where are you from? Y'all too. Originally. Uh, New Jersey, uh, Phillipsburg, New Jersey. That's about, uh, I don't know, about an hour and a half, I guess, above Trenton. Okay. Oh, Trenton. So before you joined the Air Force, did you already know that you were going to go? Like, did you, like how, how did you pick the, the Air Force over, let's say, the good service, the Navy? Or the, the better service, the <laughs> Marines. I don't know. Uh I'm kind of a motorhead, and initially, I, when I went in and thought about joining the military, I wanted to be a jet engine mechanic because, you know, a need for speed kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, through the process of joining the Air Force, uh, that position wasn't open for me at the time. So I wanted to—I know I wanted to work on planes again because, you know, I was an auto mechanic by trade at that point. And I wanted to work on the planes. I mean, if you're going to go in the Air Force, you don't want a desk job, right? You want to go out there and work on the freaking planes. Right. So uh, I took the armament spot. And uh, at first, I didn't know if I was going to like it. And uh, it kind of grew on me, really started enjoying it. So you say you, you did 20 years. What did you get out as, E7, E8? E7. E7. So what is that in the Air Force? Or wait, E6, E6, tech E6. sergeant. Tech sergeant. No, tech sergeant. Yeah. Okay. It's been out Got too it. long. It's kind of hard to remember all that stuff. All yeah, here you. <laughs> Dude, hey, listen, man. I, I I get so confused by the Air Force ranks. Like, I'm like, huh? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Like, a staff sergeant is an E5. and a, Is that right? A staff sergeant's an E5? Staff sergeant's E5, yeah. Yeah. See, an E5 is a sergeant. A staff sergeant in the Marine Corps is an E6. I don't know. Yeah. It's so it's weird. You guys flip flop it. We're backward. Yeah. Yeah. In the Navy, it's easy. Or you're backward. One of us is. Oh, come on. We're the Department of the Navy. We had to know your <laughs> ranks, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, uh, oh, gosh. Um, how was Korea? Korea was the worst year of my life, and at oh, the same man. time, the best year of my life. I went through a lot of crap personally while i was over there uh 
but we made our way through it and that's where uh that's where i i found god so amen brother excellent yeah excellent what part of uh we're at in south korea were you Kunsan, down there working on the f-16s is that uh I was in Pusan. Is there anywhere near Pusan? That's in. Uh, my <laughs> South Korea geography is not going to be what it should be. Uh, I think yeah. that was further north than we were. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was yeah. the... Hey, don't ask me, man. I don't even. I don't even know where South. I don't even know where Korea is on a map. <laughs> it's Never south. Been. It's south of North Korea. Oh, yeah, just... okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Blake. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> Calling me out like on the air. I mean, come on, man. Oh, my bad. No, it's okay. That's cool. I, I, I take hey, I can take it from you. It's those other people. Yeah. We had a, another Air Force guy on last night, man. He was giving it to Andrew. Yeah, yeah, dude. He 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 ripped me a new asshole. Yeah, like, he, was like, he was throwing zingers all night. I'm like, like, damn, damn dude. I'm I mean, a little was, more laid back, yeah. Well, he was an E9, so I mean, I can't really disrespect oh. him. So, whatever, what, what's an E9 in the Air Force? That's a command so, sergeant major. Master Chief. Uh, 67. It was a e master. Nine, a senior master sergeant. Senior, senior master, master, yeah. Sergeant. That sounds like really important. Yeah. Yeah. Not, he was, if I'm not mistaken, that's it. Right on, man. Well, that's so, cool, uh, man. Uh, how, how did, uh, uh, the, the reason I, the, how I found you was on social media and uh, Jasper. So how did I, how long have you been doing Jasper? Did you start this in the military or? No, I just started it. Uh, well, my son caught a rabbit. He brought it in the backyard years ago. He's 24 now. And he did that when yeah. he was like 10 years old. So that's the point where I wrote the first book. And then you pitch it to publishers and nobody wants it and you wait five yeah. years and you try pitching it again and nobody wants it. And I went through that process about three or four times. And at 2020, just like when COVID started hitting Fulton publishing decided, uh, yeah, that's what kind of a neat little story. We'll go ahead and do that for you. And, uh, I subsequently used my COVID relief money because being retired air force, having a full-time job, I didn't really need that money. I really didn't. Yeah. Uh, so, I used that money and put it into the publishing of my first book. So I didn't really have any real skin in the game. It was just that money. I didn't know what to do with anyway. And where and, can we, uh, uh, can we get this book uh, on Amazon or. Yeah, it's available everywhere online. Amazon.com, Walmart.com books, a million uh, Barnes and Noble. Okay. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit, get, getting it in stores. Uh, still kind of working on that. That problem is, is, Fulton Publishing has it set up as a print-on-demand book. Barnes & Noble and Books A Million won't stock in their store a print-on-demand book for whatever reason. I don't know. It's just their corporate policy. I haven't heard that Walmart won't yet, so that's the next one I really want to try to push at. But that's Man, what's I, holding me up a little I've, bit trying to get in stores. I need to get my, uh, a copy of that. So how, how, did you, uh, how do you get it out of that classification so you can get it in Book & More like a – I don't know. They, I won't say they refuse to answer my emails, but they haven't answered my emails on that exact question because I'm, yeah, I'm curious. Is the same thing? Is it just a, is it just a bookkeeping thing? It's like okay, well, we'll take it out of that and put it over here, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but it is the distributor is Ingram Content. It's one of the larger distributors in the nation for books, so uh, they'll ship pretty much worldwide, everywhere. Um, it's just that one little sticky point, which I really need to work on. Do you and, write uh, the stories also and the artwork or the artwork and somebody else writes the stories? How, how does that work? No, I don't do the artwork. Uh, the stories are all mine. Um, the publisher hooked me up with like a choice of 10 publisher or 10 uh, illustrators. And I had to pick yeah. one and I knew it was going to be for like kids like zero to six years old. So I knew the artwork had to be pretty basic not a lot of detail kind of cartoon kind of style yeah. stuff hey i just ordered my book so oh. thank you. <laughs> awesome thank you uh sorry i was i was looking uh, I, uh, I got it right well you guys can't really see it but um, it's all washed out yeah it's all washed out but i see a bunny and a swan and a duck and a fox on a sand castle yeah it's uh yeah it's uh yeah, it's I pretty just, cool I, I just got your book so thank you doug thank you so much 
You're welcome. Greatly appreciate it. So uh, how, how many books are there in the series? Is it a series or is it just one book? We're working on series. We've got the two. It's uh, The Night I Spent in the People House is the first one. And uh, A Day at the Beach with Jasper and Friends is the second one. I do feel like I'm getting better at writing stories with each corresponding book. The next one is I want to try to start publishing the uh, first of January. It's going to be a story about uh, the same characters that are in those two books are going to go to the farm and they're going to feed the animals and plant some crops and that sort of thing. And I just ordered the night I spent in a people's house. (laughs) You're on it. Thank you so much. I can't wait. No, I just, I I like, I got the Amazon Kindle. So I just boom, boom, boom. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it looks cool. I can't wait. I just had Thank a grand. You. I just had a granddaughter, so I'll be ordering it also and sending it up to her. Definitely. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of little family Easter eggs in the first book because, I, be honest with you guys, I didn't think anything was going to happen with this. You know, you, it's like, all right, this is going to be fun to do. I got some spare money. Let's make a book out of the little story that I came up with with my son. So I figured I'd sell it to family and friends, you know, and it would be kind of cool. So there's little Easter eggs in there, like the the yellow house that's on the second page or so, uh, is actually my farm, the farmhouse we had in Maryland when we had the, the poultry farm, and uh, nice. some of the, the pictures in the first book are from the inside of my house in my backyard. Uh, the, the publisher oh, cool. said the story sounds great. We need some ideas for the illustrator. So could you? send us some ideas of what you want. And I'm going, I've never done this before. I don't know how to explain a scene to an illustrator. So I'm looking around the house and it's like a little light bulb comes on and it's like, oh, wait a minute, I live in a house. And it's about a rabbit that goes in a house. So I started going around the house with my camera down about knee high, taking pictures of different spots in my house where I thought the rabbit would go. Oh, that's and cool. the same with outside in my backyard and yeah. uh, the ponds that are in the front of that first book, uh, we live across the street from a couple ponds. This subdivision has some ponds in it. So I had to go down by them and take some pictures. Neighbors probably thought I was losing my mind, but I didn't know what else to do. So the so, two books are all the characters in all the both books, same? Both books, yeah. And they'll be the same characters in the third book. And uh, the fourth book looks like it's going to be a uh, Christmas story book because everybody's got a Christmas story. Yeah. So uh, the, I don't think the birds are going to be in that yet. I started the started fiddling around with some ideas for that. And uh, initially I had the birds flying south because it's cold, it's winter, that's what birds yeah. do kind of yeah. thing. And just had like the, the rabbit, uh, the squirrel and the mouse uh, starting in that one. So the first half so, of the book is going to be probably Santa Claus stuff. And then I'm going to get into the Christian story right at the end. So when you sign them with the... Uh... The publisher, did you have to, uh, did they say, okay, we need a book every four months. This is what you have to do. Or like, are you under like, like no. these certain guidelines? It, it's kind of like a hybrid publisher. I don't, I hesitate to call it a vanity publisher, but you do have to pay up. Well, you don't have to pay up front. You can, but <clears throat> it's like about 2,800 bucks, three grand a book. And uh, you pay a little bit up front and you can finance it out if you have to, or if you've yeah. got all the money, you can just pay for it up front. Uh, so, so what, they what don't does really the publisher put you in a tr- contract for X amount of stories? What, just, what does the publisher do for you? Like, wh- how, how do you, how does it make it the uh, three thousand dollars? How does it make it worthwhile? Do they uh, like the illustrations? Uh, I don't have to look for an illustrator because they got the illustrator for me. I don't. They, they take care of the ISBNs, the copyrights, the UPC codes, uh, okay. all that sort of thing. They take care of uh, of shooting it out to all the uh, the Amazons, the books, uh, the Barnes yeah, and Noble, the nice. books a million, that's and cool. get me all set up online. They do marketing. Uh, so it really is kind of worth it. Some folks say, you know, that's you know that's really not the way to do it. And there's other cheaper ways of doing it through Amazon and that sort of thing. But you know, yeah. different things work for different people, and this just seems to work for me. So. Yeah, I'm sticking with it for now. Anyway, um, I'm I'm excited. I can't wait to get these books. <laughs> I like I like cartoons. I'm sorry, I do. I like well, cartoons. You're a marine, so uh, I wasn't gonna uh, say don't anything. say it. <laughs> don't say it, dude. Uh-uh, don't say it because I had plenty of that yesterday, and I swear to God, I was gonna have like a conniption fit if somebody said crayons one more time to me. I was gonna punch him in the face. Well, you know, uh, there's that one guy uh, on Facebook. I'm on the Vetrepreneur site, and there's that one guy, I guess, that made edible crowns. So, you know. Yeah. Um, 
and then there's a, name. I did see that. Yeah. There's a guy actually who makes patches, uh, patch, uh, patchops.com. Tim Hickey, really good friend of mine, a uh, good Marine. And he makes patches for all, for everybody's unit that they were with. But when you order it, you get an edible crayon in <laughs> every package, which is really, is actually pretty good. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I think it's some kind of a chocolate based thing, if I'm not mistaken. If is I it? Yeah, this uh, the one he does is a gummy base, but yeah, I'd like to try the the chocolate one. I'm gonna have to order some with the TSP logo on it. Yeah, that, well, hey, our GFW's got mostly marine, <laughs> so you should bring them to our yeah. next meeting. And uh, yeah, one, one somebody brought brought it to my attention. They're like, you should you should send out a copy of you know a package of those with every book or something. I'm like, well, these are really gauged towards little kids. I don't need them just grabbing any old crown and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, they're chomping on crayons. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll, they'll all be joining the Marine Corps after that. <laughs> but um, boom there. I know there. I made fun of myself. So, Happy. Uh, the, the Marine Corps has got a birthday coming up. We do. We do. Nine days. Two, 247 years old. Whew. Yeah, Air Force, not so much. They're not that. They're not. That. Now, you guys are, what, 75? Yeah, I think, I think you guys just 75. had your birthday in September, right? Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, but you have, the, you have the, the Star Wars thing now going on. The Space Force. <laughs> the Space Force? Yeah. Hey, they got, a great, the um, they got a great song. I heard it this weekend. Um, and they, ha- they have a. They got Did they an change anthem. it? It's, it, it sounds like Star Wars, man. It it's actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I, I need to find that. I think you were talking about that yesterday, too. I was, yeah. I, I, I've never, I think, yeah, I think it. I did. Because they they did like, um, they did the color presentation, but then every branch, they walked their flag down with, uh, with their anthem. And first it was Army, and then it was... Navy, then it was Marine, no, Marine Corps, then Navy, then Air Force, then Coast Guard, then Space Force last. It was pretty cool. I don't. So uh, when when you uh, got a hold of the publishers and you were talking about the uh, bunny, did, did you pick the uh, colors and everything? Yeah, I did. Uh, the uh, Who ended up, uh, the right, what's yeah, over there, Jasper. Yeah. He him. actually, uh, the rabbit my son caught was all brown, obviously, because he's a wild rabbit. He still wanted a rabbit. He still wanted a pet rabbit. So we bought one and it was a Dutch rabbit. And his name was Digger, D-I-G-G-E-R, because he tried to dig through the cardboard box when we brought him home. But that is actually the image of Digger, the oh, pet yeah. rabbit that we actually had. And uh, when I was talking to the illustrator about about drawing that rabbit, I said, he's just got to be the cutest rabbit because this is for kids. So, I mean, he's just got to catch your attention right from the get go. Right. You know, just, and uh, I think she's pretty much nailed it. Yeah, it's a cute, cute bunny, cute rabbit. Yeah. Sorry, uh, what's the difference between bunny and is there a difference between bunny and rabbit? Or is no, the I same think thing? So. I think it's the same thing. Well, are I you a say... bunny? Are you a bunny specialist, Doug? No, no, by any means. No, <clears throat> I say that, but after the chicken farm, uh, we bought an old chicken farm when we moved to Maryland, and we did get it in operation. And we raised about forty-five thousand chickens. Holy, Holy shit! Holy. And uh, That's a lot of chickens. It's well, a lot too. of, yeah, it's a lot of chickens. And uh, so eventually the farms fell into disrepair. And uh, dad actually raised rabbits uh, while I was in the Air Force. I wasn't at home at the time, and he went through that little uh, stint. Uh, but he did actually raise rabbits for a while and had uh, quite a few, not 45,000 by any means, but uh, probably about 50 or so. I, was, I remember being in there. At one point in time and looking at him so uh, maybe about 50. wow so he is Dude, the, uh, you're the friend. next beatrix potter man Good for you. <laughs> I, I will I can say, only hope hey, hey doug i will say that uh, your illustrator's way better than walt disney's original illustrator because the original mickey mouse is frightening oh yeah <laughs> he's oh, pretty scary yeah. wasn't he he's scary yeah. uh, scary as hell i agree with you on that one <laughs> I would hate That's to bring sure. that book home to my kids, man. Dude, Steamboat <laughs> Willie, dude, that like that terrified me as a child. Shoot, yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. But it's so, been uh, fun. I just got my uh, sales report for last quarter. We didn't do all that well, uh, but 
it's it's really that, that's why I grab all these podcasts that I can. It's like it's really about getting my name out there yeah. And, and, yeah. and hoping the right person sees it. Uh, this is probably about my 10th podcast. And I actually had a little five minute interview in Maryland on uh, uh, the Marvel uh, the Marvel Life Show is the name of the, the show okay. on the WB uh, on a CBS affiliate WBOC. So that was probably my five minutes of fame. Wow, on the that's Eastern pretty. Show hey, the WB, hell yeah, man! Right, yeah. But uh, hey, we're bigger than them, so though. We will be. To... No, no, no. We will be. <laughs> we're we will probably be. not that big as big as <laughs> WB. We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. I keep trying to throw stuff up at Fox. I know, like they they like to put guys like uh, us on there every once in a while with product. So it's like I keep trying to send emails out. Hey, we should get you hooked up with Dean Wegner because that guy's on Fox and Friends, like, and he's one of our VFW members. Yeah, he's on Fox and Friends like every other week. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I need to get on there just because I know what their 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 fan base will do for guys like us. I mean, they just really rally behind you. Next thing you know, you've sold a hundred thousand books or some stupid ridiculous number. this is no kidding though like this is exactly what the vfw is for for, for networking for people yeah. like you i think it i think it would be very beneficial for you to join the vfw and yep i'll definitely get on it i ain't on. scared i'll join anything and yeah. um i actually know your state commander i saw him this weekend his name is ed stefanik uh jr and he's a great guy he's young he's like 38 39 He's one of the youngest commanders uh, in the VFW, and I will definitely hook you up with him. He's a good right, dude. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that, that would go a long way. Yeah. And, I mean, you've got a lot of members in South Carolina that would love to get a hold of this book. I know it. I got. I know yeah. it in my heart. I'm trying to get it in eight piece. I, I, I truly think, like, Walmart has a as seen on TV section in Walmart. I really think yeah. eight piece needs a veteran product section in eight piece and just – if nothing else, grab the local because a lot of us are out there doing stuff like this. You know, a lot of veterans right, are yeah. out there being entrepreneurs and coming up with product. And I just think there'd be a real dude. I could see a Jasper shelf at the Arnold Air Force Base commissary. Yeah. I really could. And that's here in Tennessee. Did you ever go to Arnold Air Force Base? Nope, never been there. Okay. Um, it's uh, guess... it's like an hour and a half down the road. Been out the Nellis and uh, and uh, one in uh, oh shoot now I'm gonna my memory will fail me Little Rock Arkansas was there for a TDY didn't really like it there all that much not sure yeah. why it's it's Arkansas man I mean who likes who likes Arkansas yeah. seriously George Air Force Base oh I got to go out on I was uh, I was voted as a top performer on a George Air Force Base TDY sweet when, when I was working on the maintenance crew. And they sent me out to the uh, force on force in the Mojave Desert with a crazy major driving the Humvee, and uh, that was quite an experience. We parked up high on a uh, a plateau, and we watched uh, the embedded forces on one side, and then the tr- other army troops coming around the, the other side of uh, some mountains in the desert, and they just started going at it with their little war games and the A-10s flying overhead. It was really awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah Do you have a uh... You have a booth. You have a booth yet? You set up at like uh, farmers I had a market. Lieutenant with me or... the... Are you there? Yeah. 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 We're here. I had a lieutenant with me. He reaches in his flight suit and pulls out a bagel. He's like, "You want some breakfast?" And I'm like, "I am not eating anything that comes out of your flight suit yeah. pocket." I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fleek was asking you if you have like a booth that you set up and take to like craft fairs and um, yeah. stuff like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I sure do. Uh, there's a uh, farmer's market up in Fairfield County. It's about an hour up the road. Okay. And uh, I pretty much have been hitting that every uh, every Saturday morning. Um, don't sell a lot of books, but sometimes it's about just being present at those things and, and being out and being seen. Yeah, get your face and, out uh, there. I run into hey, a couple librarians up there. Take some copies, give them to the VFW, and have them sell them in their canteens and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's a way to get the word out, too. That yeah. would be – there's a lot – I mean – and that would work pretty well because they got, you know, Beaufort, uh, Charleston. They got, I think, two posts in Charleston. Um, I, I don't even know how many posts they have in South Carolina, but they have a lot of members. And a lot of a lot of these members, they have families and families want. Well, this. that's it. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah. it. Now, I've also been kicking around. I need to talk to the uh, even if I can't get my book in AFES, uh, it's 
our APHES building done at Shaw has like a little court in front of it, and then it's the, the BX behind it. And even if I can set my table up out in front, you know, one, two weekends a month or something and just sell them there, you know, just kind of yeah. thing. I have to talk to them and see about that. But, uh, but yeah, the families, I mean, it's all about the families. That's where I need to go. And so and, uh, I'm sure is, uh, plenty AP, of kids walk through APHES, is that like the Navy exchange? Yeah. 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 Okay. The NEX or the, NEX, the NEX, yeah, yeah, you said BX, like Marines, we say PX and Navy says NEX, NEX. Which I have an account with NEX and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I got one too. You do? Okay. Yes. It's great. It'd be great if you get your book in there. Yeah. We're, we just keep digging, you know, it's a retired military guys. We don't know really how to stop really. Once we get our teeth into something, we just kind of keep digging and keep digging. But and we give want up. to stop. We know, we know how to, we just don't want to, <laughs> except for me. <laughs> I want to take a little bit of a break because I've been going like faster than a jackrabbit for like three years and I need to stay home and, and I need to be with family and, <clears throat> I had some really good news. I, I, I said this last night, but uh, my wife wants me to go be a, an Episcopal priest. Awesome. So that that is five or six years in the making. I've got to go to finish my MDiv school and then five years of discernment on top of that. And I've got to go talk to the bishop and he's got to tell me I'm not crazy. <clears throat> uh, so I don't know if that's gonna, even going to work out because I am pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, are you, you, can have are, you your, a, uh, are you a minister, Doug? No. But you're a good church man. No, I you know, I I'm just going through uh a point in my life. I, yeah, I used to go to church every Sunday. Uh, okay. didn't miss it hardly at all. And then uh some things happened in the church and we just felt like we were being shunned though, like it was old money in the church, and you yeah. know, if you didn't have a lake house, yeah. nobody really wanted to talk to you, kind of thing. But our preacher changed, and uh, I really like him. Uh, I've been watching some of the services online. Uh, got a little lazy at that. And uh, here lately, I've just decided it's like, you know what? I'm putting my foot down. I'm getting my butt back in church. So we're going to start getting in there every Sunday now. And, Good uh, man. I've got to go to church around. tomorrow at 7 o'clock for uh, communion. So, yeah, it's uh, just got to do it. You got to start. You got to. I've, I've been pushing so hard with this book pretty much all this year. And it's like, I just got to get back to maybe taking care of myself a little bit. I want to get back in the gym and I'm, you know, not trying to get huge, but just maintain and try to, to be a little bit healthier. And no, of course. Hey, I'm trying to say, I'm, I'm trying to do the same thing. I just, I lost 25 pounds. I, I, I've got a goal of being 200 by June so I can fit into my uniform and actually look good again. Cause I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't really look so I don't look so hot right now. I like being I like being fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> fat, fat, fat navy. It's okay. Yeah. So uh lots of ice cream. Yes. So what what's next for uh Douglas Berry? Uh probably retirement. I just you know <laughs> if Jasper kicks in, I can retire in another year or two, maybe before I hit sixty two, but yeah, that's just see what we can do to get to that now uh i've done a lot uh looking back in my life and uh, i'm ready to just kind of relax a little bit been, like i said i've been pushing hard on this book this year yeah, so i really yeah. want to just maybe next year kick back a little bit you know everything in god's time maybe i'm maybe i'm pushing too hard uh no, you got it. Well, you're, the, you, you're the only one to judge that you know that yeah yeah it, do you have any hobbies like fishing hunting I don't. I uh, I have in my 58 years maybe caught three fish, so uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly my. Uh, no, my I'm not a good. Hey, I, I'm not a good fisherman either. So it's I, relaxing. I, I, I empathize with you. Now, when I was in the Air Force, uh, I hooked up with a race team up in Charlotte, and we did some Arkin, some NASCAR stuff, and that was kind of a good hobby to have. But at one point in time, I really enjoyed that. Cool. Uh, not any kind of big name team. We didn't run all the races, you know, but. It was Rich Woodland Racing was the name of the uh, race team I was with. He's uh, Rich Woodland. He's a great guy. He's good, good, still a good friend, even though we haven't yeah. been racing in a long time. Uh, but that was quite an experience uh, going over pit road, uh, being catch can man one time, front tire carrier another time. And then uh, basically uh, the sign holder, you know, the yeah, 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 yeah. kind of thing. And, and 
and garage mechanic changing rear end gears, that sort of thing for him. And how that was kind of fun. Every you? once in a while, he'd call up and say, hey, we're getting the band back together. And all right, I'll be right up there. What, it takes you like, what, 15 seconds to change a tire? Uh, I didn't change tires. I carried them. But, yeah, it would take probably 30 seconds for me to change okay. the tire. Yeah, that, that's good. <laughs> hey, you got to have a good that. pit. You got to have a good pit crew. I uh, I was decent at carrying. Uh, but yeah, I went up to his garage one time and tried to practice because uh, they've got these uh, they've got these rims where the lug nut never comes off. It's uh, it's on a spring for practicing. And I went up there and tried yeah. my best, and it's like oh, I just I just couldn't get it. Yeah. So uh, we just did other stuff. But it was it was really a blast. Um, That's cool. Got man. to met, meet some really interesting people, some some NASCAR guys, uh, Kenny Schrader, uh, Sterling Marlin. Oh, you met him? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we were watching like weather him. together once in Dover, uh, Dover uh, Racetrack. Uh, I was on uh, Stanton Barrett's team for one race up at Dover, and that was where I went to see my first NASCAR race, and that was the only actual NASCAR Cup race I worked, so it was kind of like full circle, so it was kind of really cool. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've never been to a NASCAR race. But, uh Pretty exciting. I, it's kind of spoiled yeah. me that I've been working down in the garage area. I don't know if I could go up and sit in the stands and watch one. I think it's <laughs> far more exciting I, down in the garage area. We, I bet. The closest I've been is a Grand Prix. And uh, we had the, the Music City Grand Prix last year in Nashville. It was IndyCar. Um, and that's mm -hmm. the closest I've been to any kind of racing except for, you know, on TV. We were at, uh, was it Kansas City? Kansas? Kentucky, Kentucky Speedway. We were at Kentucky okay. Speedway doing an ARCA race, and uh, some Indy cars were there. I think the the Indy race was right after ours, and uh, we snuck into the Indy car garage. My, <laughs> we were walking along, and Rich is like, "Don't look back, just keep walking like you're supposed to be in here." So we just kept going. Nice. And, uh, got to get in there, look around at the Indy cars. It was uh, that about takes your breath away when you walk behind one that's running because they run that methane stuff, and it's like, Ugh. all you can do to breathe. <laughs> Hey, uh, I have an update for you. I think Bryce Har Harper hit a home run. Awesome. Yeah, go Phillies. It's way gone. Yeah, they're, who are, they, who they're, they playing? Houston again? Houston, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. it's, game, it's game three. So they they're won, they won Saturday, the they lost Sunday, and they're winning tonight? I don't know. What's uh, the record now? I'm, they're one and one, but uh, yeah. I got a cryptic message on my phone that uh, Bryce Har Harper – yeah, it, they're winning two to nothing. So no, okay. there you go. Get the fans behind them, and they won't be able to catch them. Yeah, right. Bryce Harper homer to right field. That that kid is a beast, man. He's something else. They yeah, got he's... a lot of sluggers on that team. That's for sure. Just about everybody can put one out of the park on that thing. That's yeah. Well, Doug, I don't know if you know this, but but Fleek has another podcast called the Nose Nosebleed Report. Yeah. And he does all sports, and that's uh, what Sundays at nine, right? It is, yes. Sunday mornings. You should definitely subscribe to it. It's actually um he's pretty good. Um he, he's pretty yeah. good. I mean he's good here, but he's really good on the nosebleeds. Up to tune in for sure. There's five of yeah. us and we just talk sports. Yeah, the, I don't know how much of my wall of shame you can see behind me, but I got a bunch of autographs and stuff up there. I yeah, yeah I so did I. when you were setting up, I did see that. Yeah, there's a <laughs> I got Jim Bunning. We got a Dick Vermeil, Wild Thing, Mitch Williams. Just because. <laughs> yeah. I just got this one a couple days ago. He's a Lions rookie out of uh, Alabama. Ah. Cool yeah. Reason. Hey, Doug, do me a favor. When you go before you go to bed tonight, can you pray that the Lions are actually gonna, <laughs> you know, win a couple games this year? I, you know. The way they started out against Philadelphia, the Eagles, I thought they had something going on. I mean, the Eagles beat yeah. them anyway, but they put a bunch of points up, and I'm like, "Hey, the Lions might have something going on this year." It looks like it must be their defense. It's that's that's. Then they went failing them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was pretty excited about that points. Eagles game, man. The uh, you know the Eagles, you guys are still undefeated, right? Yep, seven like, and zero. Seven and zero. Damn, and, uh, they got a soft schedule too. Fly right. Eagle, fly. <laughs> I love that yeah. movie. Um, who's the the bartender that walked on? What, what uh, what's oh, the name? Vince Papelli story? Yeah, yeah. Papelli story. Yeah, that's right. That's a great story, man. 
Yeah, his son was playing in the what was it the USFL oh, that shit. they had last year Damn. Uh, for the Florida oh. team. I didn't know that. Yeah, so uh, is he still he's... alive? Yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I was kind of hoping his son, you know, kind of maybe it'd go full circle and the Eagles could could sign him for something. But he is playing football, so that's that's pretty cool. I watched that's him uh, recover a a fumble. And uh, he he almost scored a touchdown on it. That would have been awesome. That would have been like another Disney movie right there. You know, and I didn't even know Disney. I like I, I don't even remember Disney doing that movie, but I guess I guess they did. And it's, it wasn't bad for a Disney movie at all. Yeah. No. Did you know who uh, John Dornbos is? This dude was he. He played for the Phillies. Uh, He's the long snapper, right? Um. Uh, I believe he was. Yeah. Yeah. He he played for the Phillies and the Phillies traded him. So it while he was tr- getting being traded, you know, you have to go through a full physical. Yeah. And the, the doctor came out and said, Hey man, do me a favor, sit down. He's like, Well, what's going on? He's like, Whatever you do, do not bend over, don't pick anything up. And the guy's like, What is going on? It's like your heart is enlarged. If you pick something out right up right now, you have a very good chance of your heart just exploding and dying. Yeah, I heard about that. He, the only he's thing doing is, magic now, though. Yeah, he does a magic show. And he does a he does great magic shows. He's awesome, but the the but for just him getting traded is is what saved his life because he wasn't if he didn't get traded he wouldn't have had to go through a physical and he probably would have died right on the field. Yeah, he would have just kept playing. Yeah, wow, yeah. that would have been horrible. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. and then uh, I think the Eagles won the Super Bowl that year because the ownership actually still gave him a ring. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, that year that the Eagles won the uh, the Super Bowl, that's the the same year my brother passed from cancer. So it's kind oh, of man. A, a bittersweet sorry, year for me. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. It's a, it was a a long. Uh, he fought it hard. Give him that. He didn't give up. He fought it till the end. What what kind of cancer was it? It was uh, they believe lung cancer that just started to move throughout his body. Yeah. Uh, he had a, uh, he was a uh, prison guard down at uh, 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 Angola State Prison in Louisiana. Oh, and uh, he had an incident on his horse because down there they put their, uh, their officers on horses and they put the guys out in the field and the officers go out on horses with their shotguns and stuff. And his horse got spooked by a snake and uh, it reared up and threw him off onto the road. And then the horse fell on top of him. Ah. And uh, everybody thought he was dead then. Uh, and they think that that trauma moved the cancer. They think he had the cancer in his lung then, and that trauma made it to start move around his body because evidently uh, when cancer faces trauma, it'll, that's what it'll do. It starts moving around. I'm so yeah. sorry, and, man. And that's when uh, he lived for quite a while after that. But uh, it's cancer, man. It catches up yeah. to you. Yep, for sure. Uh, my brother also passed away from colon cancer, stage four, uh, 2014. So... Yeah, um, cancer sucks. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. Sorry. Hard to watch when I got my I wear my bracelet every day. It's a fu cancer. Fu yeah, cancer. Right? <laughs> my my sure. mom passed away from cancer. Also, kind of the same oh thing. She had a uh, ovarian cancer, and then that the doctors didn't even know about it. And uh, she had a sur- she had surgery done on her neck to clear out her carotid arteries. But when they put her on the bypass machine, for so her body could still get oxygen while they're cleaning this out. The oxygen hit the cancer in her ovaries, and it exploded like wildfire. That's what I hear, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then once, you know, it, once the oxygen hits it, it just goes nuts. Yeah, it, it just decimated her whole body. She was spent almost a year in in the hospital, just brittle. And it was bad. But, yeah, cancer can suck it. Yeah, yeah. F.U. cancer. Sure. F.U. cancer. So. Um. Wow. This, hey, this has been great. Thank you, Doug. No, yes, no sir. problem. This has been yes, awesome. Sir. So uh, we can wrap it up. But the, this episode will go live on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else. Uh, not this Sunday, but the Sunday before. But I can send you a link so you can yeah. spread it out. Spread it out. Sure. But, uh, you can give it yeah. to Fox and Friends and to, to everybody. Yeah. But uh, we, I- we do have we have a pretty big following. And uh, we even have, you know, we're international, so we get a lot of uh, people watching in Europe and uh, Australia. So hopefully, your book catches cool. on. 
Yeah, if I could just add something real quick that I like yeah, to add on to some of these things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like to tell folks because uh, I've done some crazy stuff in my life, you know. There's, but uh, you got to forget about failure because failure ruled my life. The thought of failure in my younger years, and then I joined the military and learned you got to fight through failure. Well, you got to get the the whole terminology of failure. Just forget about it. It's not failure. It's learning. Right. And you just got to you got to push through that and just learn your stuff and get to the success on the other side. And just don't let your life be overcome by that word failure. That is that you just need to replace it entirely. No, agreed. For sure. Uh, I think it, uh, Thomas Edison failed a couple hundred the times before yeah. the light bulb came out. So, yeah. And that'll you know. rule your life. I mean, if you get that in your head that you're just afraid to fail, you, you're never going to get yeah. anything done. Yep. And you just gotta you're going to be stuck. That. You're going to be stuck in a rut. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was, uh, I had the idea of this podcast for years, but I was always afraid to fail and people aren't going to like it. And then I talked to chaps one day and he's like, Oh my God, I love that idea. Let's I do did. It. <laughs> I, dude, I love the idea. I was like, dude, this is awesome. You know, and we're not like other podcasts. Like we are, we are our own entity. Okay. Yeah. You know, other podcasts, Joe Rogan, Jocko, whatever, you know, they've got their own stuff. We we have a a uh we have a genre that is very unique um i mean shit i'm in my damn bathrobe right now okay <laughs> and we're on a podcast yeah yeah for sure so like people like jocko and joe rogan they you know they uh interview like the cream of the crop like, the big names yeah they're they're way up on the top but uh there's so many other stories out there and uh stories that you don't hear that you yeah. need to hear and then yeah, that's definitely. that's like you and and david from yesterday and um you know i mean we've had how many how, how many episodes what what episode number is this uh 45 46 somewhere around holy there. crap yeah we've only been doing it for about a year and it, it just catches on and it's like uh you know, you, you're going to go tell somebody, they're going to go tell somebody. Next thing you know, like every day I look at the uh, the insights on Facebook and YouTube. Every week we grow by, uh, you know, a handful of people. See, I'd like sure. to get the, I'd like to see those numbers, man. I, I had, I had yep. somebody and I'm not going to mention his name, but he's like, how many people are listening to you? I'm like, I don't know. Fleek, Fleek does those numbers. Yeah. But hopefully uh someday i can get those numbers uh-huh. and be like no hey, you i don't really like get us on the on the on the air big guy <laughs> I, I don't like sharing those numbers because i don't want to be fixated on them you know uh sure. so when, I, when we first started i was uh getting discouraged because like we had like 20 people listening and then somebody and then somebody mentioned to me like well what if you're in a room standing in front of 20 different 20 people talking and i was like oh yeah that's a good way to look at it you know yeah i, I don't know that i could do that so these yeah. are much easier for me yeah stand yeah, in front Doug, of i had to do talking. that in front of 600 people on saturday yeah. it's, it's oh, that was nerve wracking let me tell you that yeah. going through the nco academy and having to do two speeches was good enough for me i nailed one and the second one i absolutely blew it was horrible but. well hey you know what and and you said um and those failures are actually their experiences and they make you yep. better for the next time, the next time around. Sure do. So you bet. You the got... first podcast I ever did, I was scared to death and now uh, I'm too. Real comfortable in my skin. Dude, I did my first podcast I ever did was with Travis Parrington, Oscar <clears throat> Mike radio, which by the way, I'm going to, um, you should actually Travis, if you're listening, um, you need to talk to Douglas Berry because he, um, he's got a huge following in Massachusetts. And I think um, he does. A, he actually is a. Um, he's got the. He's got a really great voice for radio. Uh, I mean, he's kind of an ugly bastard, but his 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 voice is amazing. And he's done some voiceovers for books. Um, and he did one. And I definitely think that you and Travis should talk. And if you need his number and information, I got it. And I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell Travis about you to look uh, to 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 try and contact you. Sure. Yeah. Just even just shoot me his information on Facebook or something there in the messenger or something. I think you got it. Yeah. The a... sound of my voice is something I've had to get used to too. Cause I think it's kind of mundane and kind of a monotone. Dude, sound, I, but... I hate the sound yeah. of my voice. I hate but, it. Yes. I can't stand I it. Think we all I don't do know it. why fleek hasn't fired me yet because my voice, it, it sound, it's like a kid. I sound like a child or something. 
Yeah, I, I uh, hired you for your dashing good looks. Not uh, your, no, not your must, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> that's a lie. Dashing uh, good looks. I mean, yeah, when I was like 18, yeah, I was pretty hot. But no, not now. Now I'm a hot mess. That's what I am right now. I'm a wicked hot mess. Wicked hot. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Doug. I appreciate it's it. It's been fun. Yeah, it has yes. been fun. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely get your book out there for you. Yeah. I'll talk oh, about really it. really appreciate it. Talk uh, about it, yeah. One other thing, um, I just want to uh, send a shout out to Proven Valor Professionals, our show sponsor. Thank you. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey Sabins, Gunny. Yes. All uh, of our for Patreon all the members. You do, and the Patreon members. And um, we'll see you... Uh, We'll see you on the next episode. Yes, sir. See you guys. Thanks, Doug. All right. Take care.